Hi, my name is Lily and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my May reading wrap up. So in May I read five books and I'm going to be talking to you about all of them for once. I read across a variety of genres and three of them I covered in my book club reading vlog which I will link below and up in the cards in case you want to check that out for more in-depth reviews on those books. I'll let you know as I'm talking about them which ones those are. So the first book I finished in May was Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. I started this one, I think I started it while I was on the plane home from holiday in April and finished it in early May. This is young adult fantasy and I gave it four stars. So this one follows a young woman named Maya. She is the daughter of a once famous tailor who has now fallen into a depression and illness that means that he is not working very much. They're very poor and her brothers have all been sent off to war. One day they get a missive from the emperor saying that her father has been summoned to take part in a competition to become the emperor's new tailor and specifically the tailor for his soon to be bride. Maya ends up going in her father's place to take part in this competition and we follow her through the competition and what goes beyond that. This was pitched as a Project Runway meets Mulan and honestly it kind of was but not as much. So I really enjoyed the fantasy elements of this, seeing the magic grow and learn more about it and I loved all of the plot twists that came with the plot and also the romance was really great. I enjoyed seeing that develop. It, it was predictable but I don't think it was meant to not be. <laughs> the thing that let it down for me to make it not a five star was I felt as though the pacing was a bit off and it was more tell than show. I felt like the competition could have been more drawn out, we could have had more details about how things were done and I felt like more research could have gone into how things could have been made and the different embroidery techniques so that we could have more detail in the competition. It felt very rushed and it felt like it should have been two books because there's the competition half of the book and then there's the half that comes after the competition and I felt as though the competition should have been one book and the other half should have been a second book because I feel like that would have done both stories justice whereas I feel like both were quite rushed. However, I am going to be giving the sequel a go. It is a duology. I have it reserved in the library, just waiting for whoever's got it out at the moment to return it because it is overdue. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to read the next book and I am not expecting amazing things, but I definitely want to find out what happens next. Then I read The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Songu Mandana. So this one was for uh, Leanne from Literary Diversions. It's for her Patreon book club, which is a bi-monthly book club. Um, so if you want to hear more about my thoughts of this book in more detail, go and check out that reading vlog I mentioned because it is part of that. But what I have to say is this is a five star new favourite book for me. So this is a cosy fantasy romance, very similar to The House in Cerulean Sea if you've read that before. And it follows a woman who is a witch who has been orphaned. She has been making these TikTok videos uh, that are fake witchy videos just for fun. But someone watches them, spots that she's a real witch and asks her to come and move into this house that they're living in to become the magic teacher for three young witches living at the house. But in this world, witches are not supposed to live together because it creates too much magic, so she has to keep this a secret from the other witches that she knows. I just adored this one. It is the perfect cosy fantasy vibe for me. I think if you're not a cosy fantasy reader, you're going to struggle with this one. There's not an awful lot of plot, not an awful lot going on. It is just cosy vibes, wonderful characters, and it just felt like the warmest of hugs. If you like The House of Cerulean Sea, I would be shocked if you don't like this one. The magic system was really interesting. I loved how connected to nature it was and how fluid it was as well. And I really liked seeing the young witches learning to wield it and their different strengths. The interpersonal relationships between the different characters are great. I felt like even though it was a fairly big cast for such a small book, I felt like they were all individuals. I knew who they all were and they had their own character, but they all felt developed as well. The romance in this one is also really good. It is slight enemies to lovers or more grumpy sunshine than enemies to lovers. And so seeing them warm up and open up to each other and also learn to become vulnerable with each other is just beautiful. There is a little bit of spice in this book, but not too much. So if you don't like spice at all, maybe avoid it, but it is really minimal and towards the end of the book. So with that being said, I could not recommend this book more. I really, really loved it. I was completely swept away by it. I sat and read it almost cover to cover and I just want more from this series. I, like, it's not even a series, it's a standalone, but I would happily read more books about this world and following the younger witches or other witches that we meet in the book. 
just because I want these cozy vibes to continue and Sanku Bandana is definitely going to be on my radar for the future, especially if she writes any more cozy fantasy. Then I read Small Pleasures by Kerr Chambers. This was another book club pick which was for Amy's book club from uh, Amy's bookshelf which I will link below. Uh, this one was an uh, interesting read for me. <laughs> I gave it two stars and it is a literary historical fiction. So as with the previous one, if you want to hear my more in-depth thoughts, especially throughout the book, go and check out that reading vlog. This one is about a woman who is a journalist working for a newspaper in London in the 1950s, I think it was, uh, perhaps the 60s, but I think it was the 50s. Um, and one day they get a letter from a woman claiming that her daughter was the result of a virgin birth. And so our main character is sent to investigate this and see if they can find out whether or not it was a virgin birth and then write an article about it. <laughs> so it's a strange book. I, like I said, I gave it two stars and it was mostly because I feel like this book makes you work really hard for not much. It's a very slow paced book and it's a real slog to get through and I feel like <laughs> the ending, if you've read the book, you'll know what I mean by the ending. I, I spent, I read like over 300 pages for that to be the ending. So you have two threads in this book. You have the virgin birth story, which is kind of the mystery story of the book. But then you also have a romance element, which is developing throughout the book. And uh, I think Amy said it very well when she said that it felt like it was two book ideas smushed into one and neither was really done particularly well. We were talking about this a lot in the book club meeting for it. And what I thought someone said very well what I really agree with is this book was trying to do a lot and in doing so did all of the different threads disservice. So we have our main character who's a spinster and her sister is now living in Africa with her husband and has left her behind with their widowed mother and now the main character has to look after the widowed mother as like the only remaining child in the in England and so she has this bitterness towards her mother and that's one of the storylines and this slight like bitterness towards her sister for escaping that's another storyline then you have the romance then you have her trying to build a relationship with the mother and daughter and trying to investigate the mother whilst also forming this friendship with her and there's just so many little threads happening in this book that I can't tell you about because that's spoilers and I felt like none of them were really delivered very well and personally, I also felt like the characters fell very flat for me, except for Howard, the husband um, in the story, and the daughter that I can't remember the name of right now. I think it was Margaret. And so I, I felt like most of the female characters were squished into archetypes of the spinster, the mother, um, and they didn't get a chance to really become more than that in the book. Um, and, and I felt like I just didn't care. I wasn't connected to any of the characters and I didn't really care what happened to them other than Howard and Margaret who were ultimately more side characters um, and I didn't really care what happened to our main character. And just to reiterate, that ending, I hate it. No thank you. I read all of that book for that to be the ending. No thanks. Then I took a break from book club books and read Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. So this is an adult contemporary romance and I gave it five stars. So this is an enemy to lovers slash grumpy sunshine romance. It follows Naomi and Knox. So Naomi has this evil twin sister who calls her up one day asking for help. And so on the day of Naomi's wedding, she decides to leave her fiance at the altar to go and help her sister. And when she gets there, her sister steals her car and her money and leaves behind a niece that Naomi didn't even know existed and doesn't say when she's coming back. So now Naomi, who is having an absolute personal life crisis, has to look after this new niece that she didn't know anything about, uh, while also trying to form a relationship with the townspeople, including Knox. The vibes. <laughs> I really like this one. I have seen this be a very Marmite book. I think if you don't read a lot of romance, this book is going to be kind of difficult to stomach. It's one of those books where you have to really be into the tropes that are in this book. I did find the alphaness a little bit off-putting at times, but in general I did really like their dynamic and I, I love a Grumpy Sunshine book. Is the plot a little bit ridiculous? Yes. But do I forgive it because it's a romance? Also yes. <laughs> So this one is just so much fun and uh, it's quite a high spice level. It's, it's a really chunky book. It's like 500 pages, I want to say. So it does take until like 50% of the book for the spice to kick in. But once it kicks in, it doesn't stop kicking in. So if that's not your vibe, maybe avoid it. But I just really enjoyed it. Um, it's mostly a vibes five star. 
than an actual quality I would say. So I wouldn't be surprised if for most people this is more of a four star read or even a three. But this just had a lot of my favourite tropes and I really like Knox and his grumpiness and I really like Waylay and her funniness which is the niece. I loved the dogs, I loved the grandma and I loved how it was everybody in the town getting involved. I love a small town romance full of busybodies and a town that just can't stay out of anyone's business. And the final book that I read in May is The Three Dahlias by Katie Watson which is my final book club book. So this is an adult cozy crime slash mystery that I gave four stars. So I'm not a cozy crime or mystery reader, so take my review with a pinch of salt. I don't know the genre very well. Again, if you want to find out my more in-depth thoughts, go and check out that reading vlog because this was for my in-person book club. So this one follows three women who have all played the same character, Dahlia Lively. She is the female detective lead of this uh, detective novel series similar to Agatha Christie set in the 1930s and 40s. So you have Posey who is set to star in an upcoming movie adaptation for this series and then you have Caro who is the longest serving Dahlia Lively who played Dahlia for 13 seasons of a TV show adaptation and then you have Rosalind who is the original Dahlia Lively who played her in the first ever movie adaptation many years ago. They are all attending a convention at the house of the deceased author which is like a fan convention for Dali Lively fans. They are the star attraction basically. But at this convention crimes start to happen and the three of them have to work together to find out what's going on as it is impacting all of them. So this one really pleasantly surprised me. Like I said I am not a cozy crime or mystery reader as a standard. In fact I generally avoid them because they make me anxious. But I read this for the book club as part of my experiment and I really enjoyed it actually. My favourite narrator was Posey. She goes up first. It is done in mostly an age order. The first couple of chapters are by Rosalind but the first major chunk is by Posey and I really liked her. Through Posey's narration we get to see the talk about being a child star in Hollywood and how that impacts your work and also how um, addiction in Hollywood is treated and how it is to try and rehab your like public perception um because basically she, she is a disgraced child star who is trying to clean up her image and get more work and I loved her I really liked Posey she was my favorite I liked her innocence I liked that she felt very grounded but was still a very interesting character I really struggled to connect with Caro I found her quite unlikable and so when we switched to her narration I did start to switch off a little bit internally Rosalind I couldn't tell you much about I feel like we didn't get much time with her we didn't really get to explore her character very much and she only comes in at the end when a lot of the stuff is kind of coming together so we don't get to see much of her mindset but she seemed interesting um, this is the first book in the Dahlia Lively series there's going to be more books following the three Dahlias um, and I'm hoping we get more time with Rosalind and Caro so that I can warm up to them a bit more and more time with Posey because I like her. In terms of the mystery, I really liked it because it is an immersive experience convention. So everyone was dressed in like 1940s clothing and they weren't allowed any technology. So it felt like a 1940s uh, investigation. They had to go to the library, go and look at plants and all this kind of stuff because they couldn't just Google it. They couldn't call people because they didn't know where their phones were. And I liked that. Um, I did think the murderer was a little bit predictable. Um, I felt like the murderer didn't have much of a role in the book and was very obviously not investigated by the three Dahlias until the very very end and so in my head I was like an author wouldn't include this character without there being a reason and that must be that the character is the murderer because they've not played any role so far and I was right. <laughs> However, there were other twists in the book that I was not predicting and I really liked that. Um, I was really shocked by the double twist at the end and I was very gripped. It definitely takes a while to get into and the murders happen quite late in the book but if you can persevere and, and get to the murder then I think you will enjoy this book. It is a good cozy crime, I wouldn't say it's anything mind-blowing but if you enjoy cozy crime this is probably worth checking out. So those were the five books that I read in May. It was a very varied month. I don't think I read two of the same genre, which was really fun for me. Um, I'm definitely enjoying like spreading my wings a bit more, being a bit more adventurous, and it's actually quite satisfying seeing the percentage of how many books I read being romance actually decreasing. As much as I love romance, 
I am enjoying branching out more and feeling as though I can read something other than romance. Um, and I think that's because I had a case of um, the sads in the winter and autumn months. And so I only wanted to read romance because it's predictable and it brings me joy. But now that uh, we're coming into more daylight hours and my mood has increased, I'm definitely more up for trying different books. So that's very exciting. So if you've read any of these books, do let me know what you thought in the comments and also let me know what your favourite book in May was. Mine was definitely The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. It's going to be on my top 20 of the year for sure. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to see more content from me. All of my social media links are in the description below. If you'd like to leave me a comment to let me know that you were here, please leave me an orange emoji in the comments below. Thank you again for watching. Bye!